students like me at business school are obsessed about one thing, just how much can we improve ourselves as a result of our MBA? But maybe a lot of it is as a result of what we were at the moment we were born. Now, I'm joined by Professor Scott Shane of Case Western Reserve University in the United States. You've written a book about DNA, uh, and you reckon that this plays a large part in how successful we are in later life. Right. So it turns out that there's a lot of evidence that our genetic makeup influences all kinds of aspects of work-related activity from how satisfied we are with our jobs to whether we're more likely to invest our money in stocks or bonds, whether we're likely to become entrepreneurs or not. So yes, there's a big genetic uh, component to many things that we do in the business world. And how did you conduct this research? It seems that this is one of the most difficult things to be able to uh, research. Well, the, the book actually deals with two separate uh, pieces of information. One is a set of studies that all kinds of academics have been doing for about the past 30 years that look at different aspects of job satisfaction, leadership, uh, financial risk-taking, management style. My specific area of expertise is entrepreneurship, so the chapter that deals with that involves some of my own primary research that uh, twin studies and also more recently some molecular genetic studies trying to look at specific genes that are associated with different aspects of entrepreneurship. And did you find that with twins that they had the tendency to lead quite similar uh, lives in the working world? Right, so one of the things that people have found about twins is that in fact that's a big uh, form of the evidence of a genetic component because identical twins are much more likely to share the same workplace behaviors than fraternal twins. And that provides the evidence that there's a genetic component because identical twins share 100% of their genetic makeup and fraternal twins on average share 50%. And what kind of uh, behavioral patterns are we talking about here? Are we talking about people who are bossy or people who are passive aggressive or people who are extremely ambitious? I mean, give me some examples. Well, to give you examples, type of leadership style. So, for instance, whether a person is a transactional leader and kind of gives rewards or money for people following them, or tr transformational leader where they're charismatic and get other people to follow them, that leadership style, there's a genetic component of financial risk-taking, whether people are more interested in investing their money in uh, stocks versus bonds, there's a genetic component uh, to that. Uh, there's a genetic component to how frequently we change jobs, how much satisfaction we express with the job that we have. So it's a whole variety of different areas where there's a genetic com component. And when we talk about the financial markets, obviously there was quite a lot of soul searching after the credit crisis that maybe uh, certain people were predispositioned to causing busts. What did you feel from your research and your uh, studies about this? Well, that's a, it's a little bit hard, with based on what we know now, to go that far because we don't really know the mechanism. We don't know whether some people are genetically predisposed to um, be uh, more extreme in the risks that they take. What we do have evidence of things like people are more likely uh, for uh, to have a genetic predisposition to choose certain financial instruments. So. For instance, people have shown using twins and uh, the privatization of the Social Security in Sweden that there was a genetic component to the portfolios that people put together. Um, I suspect that there's a genetic component to virtually everything in the, um, the work world, and so probably there's some uh, contribution to what went on in the financial crisis, but I wouldn't be able to pinpoint the specifics uh, at this point. Well, to the average layman like myself, it's quite a scary thought that DNA plays such a large part almost feel that we are predestined to something. I mean, do you think that's uh, going a bit too far? It, it is going too far because we're, we're, not, um, we're not predestined. So the, one of the differences between genetics and things like workplace behaviors and some of the areas where we look at genetics, for example, there's a genetic determinism of things like whether you get Huntington's disease. If you have a particular genetic variant, you will get that disease. But for human behaviors, there's nothing that's deterministic. It's just probabilities. It's not different than thinking that there's a genetic predisposition. My genes affect the odds that I'll be an entrepreneur as the amount of money that um, my family gave me affects my probability of being an entrepreneur as well. So all of these things are just affecting uh, probabilities. And certainly, one thing 
something affecting the probability could be overcome by another. I mean, it seems that this is very cutting edge research. Do you think in the years to come we'll see more and more uh, studies like this, which uh, maybe link entrepreneurship with our DNA built uh, makeup? I, I do think so. I think there's actually a convergence now of people who are beginning to research in cognitive neuroscience and doing brain scans to see how people are making their decisions with the genetics component and also some work on hormones and putting those uh, different things together. The other area that I think there's a big uh, open avenue is things that we haven't normally thought about as mechanisms towards entrepreneurship, like uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and dyslexia, both of which have a strong genetic component. We know that the, both of those things are overrepresented amongst entrepreneurs, so it's possible that what we're observing is mechanisms where people who are genetically predisposed to have dyslexia, they head down different career paths than those who are genetically predisposed not to have it, and that accounts for the differences in their occupations. Okay, Professor Scott Shane, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.